section. Today we're going to apply a total contact cast. The most important thing in healing a diabetic foot ulcer is to eliminate the pressure under the ulcer. We could use all of the medications, topicals, antibiotic, everything in the world. The most important thing to healing an ulcer is to get the pressure off of the ulcer by offloading it. And the best way to accomplish that is with a total contact cast, better than anything else. And there's research that proves that. We have a kit with all the things in it. There is padding for the toes, our felt, which we're going to use to offload bony prominences, gauze for between the toes, padding in the form of Webrel, stockinette, and our fiberglass. Comes all nicely packaged. The first step is to apply the stockinette. We're going to roll it up, which makes it much easier to put on. Rolling it up like this makes it easier to apply, giving it a good stretch makes it even easier. It's important to leave a little excess hanging off the tips of the toes, which we'll address later. And when applying the stock and net, it's important to make sure there are no wrinkles. We want this nice and smooth. We roll it all the way up. It's important to be at least one inch above the tibial tuberosity, which we clearly are here. In somebody that has a longer leg, it might not be that easy, and you might have to adjust the stockinette up or down to get it where you want it, but we're well above it in this case. No wrinkles. Throughout the entire process, it's going to be important that the foot is at 90 degrees on the leg. And you see we have wrinkles in it. So we're going to get those wrinkles out, and we're going to ask our patient to hold the foot at 90 degrees as best he can throughout the entire thing. And if a patient gets fatigued, you can always help them by supporting the foot at 90. So that's our first step. We then have our adhesive felt. And we're going to cut a strip to protect tibial crest. This strip should go from roughly the tibial tuberosity, which you can easily feel, to the dorsal midfoot level. So we're going to cut that. And again, we want the foot at 90 degrees. When we do this, we're going to pull our sticky off the back. This goes over tibial tuberosity. And we're going to go right along tibial crest. And when we get to the ankle, again, we're going to make sure to keep him at 90 degrees so that you don't get any wrinkles at the anterior ankle region here. And at this point, we can fold that over the toes, not tight, you don't want to pull on it. And we'll tuck that under the adhesive of the felt here. And we'll make sure this is, everything is flat with no wrinkles. And that's perfect. The next thing we're going to do with our adhesive felt is protect the malleoli by making two circles, one for each malleolus. They do not have to be perfectly round. And again, expose the adhesive part and that's going to go right over the malleolus. We're protecting that area of bony prominence. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Next comes our foam padding to protect the toes. You can use this entire thing. I'm going to trim it a bit so it isn't as long. This particular company provides padding that has holes in it. And the thinking is that it allows better aeration to the toes. Again, has adhesive on the back.
right in the middle of this, so we have five rows of holes, we'll use the middle, the middle row to center it, and again we want him at 90. And this, you fold over and it will stick to itself on the sides. And of course being very careful to stay off the surface of the patient's foot with the scissors, we're going to trim this excess on either side. And now we have padding for the toes. Still at 90 degrees. The next step here is our padding for underneath. Now we already have plenty of padding in the toes, so we do not need any extra padding there. We want enough padding to protect the skin, but not so much padding that we lose our concept of total contact. If there is too much padding and the cast is not in close enough contact with the skin, it will not be a true total contact cast. What I have found works best is to try to keep it to roughly one layer of padding. So you start by going around once and then you have a goal of overlapping by about half. When you get to the ankle and you try to avoid, you try to avoid any wrinkles here, when you get to the ankle you do a figure eight to come around and then I'll show you a trick here if you want to zoom in right there. If you want to turn the web roll without cutting it, if you just give a little stretch in the direction you want to go, you can make it turn without cutting it. And that way we can keep it flat and then we can work our way up the leg. You want to make sure you've covered every surface, which we have. And again, we're headed, we're headed up this way too much, so right there I'm just going to stretch it a little bit and that allows us to make a slight turn without, without actually ripping it. And we're overlapping by about 50%. And again, we're going to use the tibial tuberosity as a landmark. And we're going to come pretty much right up to tibial tuberosity, which is right there. Now we're ready for our casting material. This particular kit comes with three three-inch rolls of fiberglass and two four-inch rolls. That's more than what we're going to need for this patient. So we're going to get it nice and wet. The wetter you leave it, the longer it will take to dry. So if it's one of your first couple times and you think you might take a little longer, you might want to leave it more wet. If you wring it out more, it will dry more quickly. You start on the medial surface of the foot. And you go around twice. This is not like applying a regular cast like we're accustomed to for fractures or other sorts of trauma in that we're going to pull tighter than what we normally do because we want the concept of total contact. Now, after the second time around, we're going to turn it up and go around, around the toes. This has some elasticity to it. You see how it stretches? And you want to pull it tighter than what we normally do to make sure we're achieving total contact. Now again, I'm overlapping by about 50% as I work my way back. We always remind the patient to stay at 90. If they need some help, you can take a break with your other hand and get them up there. When we get to the ankle, we're again going to do a figure eight. And with this first roll, we'd like to lock the ankle at 90 degrees. smooth that in there, make sure he's at 90, which we're doing a good job with. Now we're ready for a 4 inch roll to go up the leg. Same 
thing. Now with this four inch roll, you do not need to go around the foot the way that we did with the three inch. We can just start out here distally. And again, we're stretching it. Make sure it's nice and snug. We're going to overlap by about half, by about 50% again. Figure eight around the ankle. And now, we can go more up the leg. This is a smaller leg than some of our patients that are requiring these casts, so we're going to end up using fewer rolls of fiberglass. Once we have these two rolls on, the next thing we do is have the patient step down on a flat, hard surface. Sometimes it's a wooden board. Sometimes we just use the floor. So we're going to have him come down. And I think what we'll do, because this is nice and hard, we'll put this down to protect the floor. And then we'll ask him to stand up. And we want the feet about shoulder width apart with the knee slightly bent, five to 10 degrees is the, is the recommendation. If you see something like this in the back, you can just smooth that out. And you have them stand for about 10 or 15 seconds. This will confirm that we have total contact on the bottom. All right, now you can sit back down. And if that sticks, it's a good sign. So we're well on our way here. Now we can go back to a three inch roll. We have our total contact on the bottom. We're gonna go over the bottom one more time. To reinforce it. And again, we, don't, we do not need to go around the foot again. Now we have this nice flat surface on the bottom from having had the patient stand down. We're doing our figure eight around the ankle. Pulling this nice and tight now. After this roll, we can use our stockinette to fold down the top, which will allow for nice padding at the top, which leaves it comfortable for the patient. We're now just below tibial tuberosity, which is where we want to be. And we have one more four inch roll up there to come down the leg. With this last one, we can start at the top. We'll work our way down. So I've wrung out my water. We're going to start at the top now. Going over the portion of the stockinette, which we folded down. Still putting some tension on it using the elasticity of this fiberglass. Figure eight around the ankle. You don't want to end on the bottom of the foot. You want to make sure your end is on the top or on the anterior leg. And we're going to work that last bit in. Before it's totally dry, just to enhance the concept of total contact, you can try to identify any areas where there might be any space. 
One of those is Achilles tendon area. Sometimes you can feel there's some space there. You can squeeze on other side of the Achilles, either side of the Achilles tendon. Sometimes right under the malleoli requires some forming, and the same over here. The patient is now to sit here for about 10 or 15 minutes before they're able to step down on this. We give them a cast shoe that attaches with Velcro straps for them to walk on the bottom. This is a solid total contact cast that they will be able to walk on. 